bring you from the bottom and put you on the top, David. When he puts you on the top, whoever you are, remember that God did the glory. Amen. 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 Hallelujah, Jesus. Look at verse 4 in the book. 2 Samuel 4 and 4. And his nurse took him up. Talk about the Philistine. And it came to pass as she hastened to flee that he fell and became lazy. At the time, the impact of his fall didn't affect him because he was only five years old. Things happen to people when they are children. Done to them by grown folks, whether intentional or accidental in this case. And it don't have a real impact on them until they begin to learn what it is to grow up and to live and to have and not have. Bear with me. I want to be this five year old for a minute as he walk around living. Healing his wounds and the maid instead of telling him, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to drop you. But I had to take you out the house because the men who was coming to kill your dad and your, and your grandfather undoubtedly they was going to kill you because when they fight a battle, they take the king out and all the males in his lineage. I'm trying to let you know there are situations in our life that made us Cripple. Maybe it was some things you saw as a child mean you cripple. Maybe it was some things that was done to you as a child mean you cripple. I'm not trying to bring you back to your past, but I'm trying to let you know if you hold on to the past and if you just don't let go to the things that happened and reach out to the God that can change it, you will still be crippled. After I read what I'm going to be teaching today, I began to look at the homeless in a different light. I began to look at a drug addict in a different light. I began to look at somebody downtrodden in a different light. Well, what you're saying, preacher, I'm going to show you right now. It's going to happen. Hallelujah, Jesus. From the time that he got hurt, he became an orphan. Oh, but even though he was an orphan, he was old enough to know that Saul was my grandfather, that Jonathan was my dad. And as he grew up, and he began to be in the orphanage, and he began to talk with the other children, you see, they had special places for crippled kids. They had special places for orphans. And Jonathan, uh, uh, and he began to grow. And then they might have been talking about stories of who they were. And he might have said, my grandfather was Saul, and my daddy was John, and I was in a kingdom, and I was in a palace, and I was third in line to be king. But don't you know the other children who may have been Papa's children, who may have been left on the side of the road, who may have had no future when they were born, yeah. might have looked at him and said, why are you telling those stories? Why are you telling those tales? And must happen as he was the truth that you have this morning that nobody wanted to believe? How many things in your life that if it wouldn't have been for the law pulling you out of that situation, you wouldn't be the person that you are today? What I'm trying to do today is get a hold of the church, is to get a hold of the people who have faith they mean it in life. You got to understand you might not be living in your same neighborhood, but you should never forget who helped get you out of the hood. Come on now. You didn't get where you are by yourself. You didn't be a self-made man or a self-made woman. Where you going, preacher? The Bible said the law is no respect a person. Sometimes we need to check ourselves. Can David the same spirit he had when he got anointed by Samuel. <laughs> when he wrote the books of Psalms and when he realized that he sinned and he did different things, he 
you always find a way to go back to where it started and say, Lord, you made me. Yeah. Lord, wholeness is not against me. What you saying, preacher? This morning, the only one who can help us with all of the things that's going on in this world is the name of Jesus. Yeah, amen. Amen. Going back to John in my mind, if you don't have to turn there, the apostles actually say, Lord, who did sin for this man to be blind? His parents or him? Say, no. God uses to manifest in him. Lord, I didn't mean to be a dope head. Lord, I didn't mean to be homeless. I didn't mean to be this. I didn't mean to be that. I didn't mean it, Lord. It was an accident that made him fall and break his legs. Situations in life make people turn to wrong. Make people fall and do things that's a foundation in his sight. But it's God who gives the glory when he takes the dope addict off the street and put him behind a pulpit. It's God who gives the glory when he takes a prostitute and make a head of the praise team. Somebody will help me preach her. This is not political correctness. This is how to let you know if you're in the ditch or if you've been in the mud, look into the hill when you're about to
but relationships coming through in your life. And as you've got to put an extra by those relationships that are meaningful in the sight of God. And I'm not preaching self-righteousness because I'm like Paul, I'm the least of the least. It might be a nobody in the sun, but in the eyes of God, you got to know who you are. Paul said, I write to you that you know you have eternal life. Amen. You got to know how you got where you are and who got you there. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's help the young man out. Let's see how God did glory in this situation. We just, years and years have passed by. He was alone and didn't have family and he was out there and sure he had his mind. He might have to read about what it is to be a king's grandson. He might have had to hear the stories of Saul and Jonathan and David from some of the elders who were taking care of the kids. And then after he looked and realized, this somebody might have said, oh yeah, that is him. I remember Jonathan had a son. Come on now. How many people help you out in your situation? And all they have to say, oh yeah, I know you. You so and so, son. You so and so, daughter. Yeah. You so and so, so and so is your uncle. Oh, I know him. I know you. Your mom, oh, I know her. So guess what? From a child coming through, uh, somebody made a phone call for you. Come on now. From your, from your childhood coming through, somebody put some sugar in that cup.
born again. The Lord delivered me. Well, what you doing? I went back to school. I got my degree. And guess what? I got a good job. Now, what you doing? I'm outreaching. And I'm reaching out to young men and telling them, you don't have to be in that situation. God can pull you out and God will get the glory. Yes, amen. Thank you, Jesus. For somebody. You know what gratitude is? Being grateful that the Lord pulled you out. And being man enough and woman enough to be grateful enough and humble enough to pull somebody else out. All right, Jesus. Come on. Hallelujah, Jesus. All right, we have another topic for another day. Let me stay right here. And watch this. Nine and one. And then it said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Come on, church. He didn't forget what he came from. He didn't forget that before he became a noted king, he wasn't even counted worthy in his own dad's house. Because when Samuel went to anoint the children of the son of Jessica, they went through all the boys. And Samuel had to ask, I know God sent me here. Is this all? Oh, oh, oh no, by the way, we, we have one more. But surely, not David. He the sheep tender. Mm. He's a bright kid. He, he. And, and Samuel said, Go get him. And when he walked in the room, we know the story. The Lord said, That is him. And Samuel anointed him with the all. And another thing the Lord said, Come on, church. I'm all about to preach in a minute. He said, Man, look on the outside. The good 
you got to be hungry to know what it is to feed the hungry. How many of you know sometimes you got to be broken to know what it is to pray with somebody that's broken? But if you forget your brokenness, if you forget your hungerness, oh, but most of all, if you forget your holiness, you will forget God and everything that he did for you. Saul. Ooh, hallelujah. They remember where he came from. And to show you how good he was, he didn't say, and for I didn't just say, uh, well, Saul treated me wrong, and I don't care what happened to his people. Jonathan was cool, but, you know, Jonathan is not around now. I don't know all nobody, nothing. He said, go and find whoever is left. Not for Saul's sake, but for Jonathan's sake. How many of you know that Jesus came through the lineage of the how many of you know that the blood connection that you have from the cross is a couple that no man can break? How many of you realize that when you get on your knees and you begin to cry out, the voice of you are going to travel and God is going to find somebody. Oh, come on, preacher. Well, how come Cornelius was praying in his house and Peter was praying on a rooftop and at the same time, the angels who is in Joppa. And then Peter was praying, and the lady said, you go to Cornelius, he's going to send for you, and you tell him what he must do. Yeah. Jesus the same yesterday, the same forever. Amen? Yeah. Don't get caught up in this 2020 hype that everything changed. He said, heaven and earth shall pass away but the word remain forever. A 
a servant whose name was Zilpah. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, he said, Art thou Zilpah? And he said, Thy servant is he. You have to understand, King David would be in Saul's presence in the past. He knew the maids, he knew the servants, he hung with Jonathan. Why? Because Saul wanted to keep an eye on him. Because Saul was cool with David until a anointed left him. Amen? And David was old enough to know him. And watch what And the king said, Is there not yet any of the house of Saul that I may show the kindness of God unto him? You see what he said? He said, I'm going to show them some love. Despite of everything that your grandfather and Saul did to me, despite all of the hurt and the bitterness I have in my heart because he treated me wrong, right. I want to show him the love that I know that I became king because of my heart and not because of my pedigree. Because according to my physical pedigree, I was useless to my brothers and to my family. Son of Abia and Leah of Lodabar. 
And the king sent and fetched him out of the house of Mecca, and the son of Amelia of Lodabar. And I made him know. Jonathan's son had lost all his kingship inheritance. Because he had no recollection and no track of where he was. Because it was dangerous, because even if the enemy knew where he was, they knew it was a good possibility under the law and under the, the, the way men would respect positions, he could have rose up. Let's go, let's go present tense. Show you how. You know, this is the only time God that we did. When they went and got Ben Lad, the Marines came, they shot Ben Lad. Shot two of his wives, and they left his son alive. Two years ago, last year, son, he made a vow. He started bringing Taliban back. He said, Death to America, and they put a bounty on him. So they took care of business when they did. Oh, preacher, that's wrong. Let me tell you something. That's why we have what we have. Death was supposed to be destroyed, and they left the life. Keep playing with the devil. Get rid of the little sin and hold a little bit on and see how it's going to pop up again and take you out. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Are we having church? That's real. We're not having church. But in some things, God might going to take away from you. You got to evaluate. Can they say, I lay on my bed and I commune with my own heart? And there's some things that crippled you as a child, young man.
five years old. I'm, I'm Saul's grandson, and my dad is Jonathan. And if and the mean, you know, that mean people listen. And they'll be like, well, you ain't nothing now. You in the office just like us. Ain't nobody giving you no land. Ain't nobody gonna bring you back to the palace. You nothing but a cripple. And this group is forbidden. You will never be king. They won't have a king with broken legs. Because you got even people. You got bullets in the kingdom. Bullets in church. Bullets in my family. Bullets in your family. And they don't mean wrong. They just got a mouth that's wrong. Come on now. Yeah. But how that so? Paul always would tell them, and so was some of you, when you were talking about his life. Let's get to the end. And look at verse 8. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant? that thou shouldest look upon such a day dawn as I am. Through the years, the fellowship have been beat down so bad by society, by the community, by his caretakers, by the system, because of something that wasn't his fault. But God saw fit to have King David restore him. Everything that he was inherited was supposed to inherit if nothing would have happened. Come on, y'all want to see what just happened. Ooh, how mad and I grew up in my daddy's house. Oh, but I'm getting ready to enjoy the inheritance through King David. Lord told him, I'm going to give you houses that you didn't build. You give you land that's born with milk and honey. You might not be living in a bad condition right now. It might be peace and agreement. It might be good. Whatever condition you're in, hold on! Because God got your number. Amen. Be ye, not weary, and well doing. For in due time, you shall reap if we faint not.
and he commanded Ziba, you're not going to work for me, Ziba, as king. But you're going to work and serve him, who you was going to be serving anyway. You see how I want to take that? Yeah. Ooh, sometimes we just got to let go and let go. Let him steal the ship in the currents. Let him be the one that fight the battle and keep our mouth closed and hold our peace. And watch what happened next. Then the king, then the king called, then the king called the silver saw servant and said unto him, I have given unto the master's son all that pertains to Saul and all his house, including you, Zippa. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, everything Saul had. Master, go get it. Even though they thought they took him out. Even though everybody mocked him and laughed and thought he was unworthy of the inheritance that God had for him if everything would have been right. I'm giving it all back to him. Can you imagine the young boy now on me? All the nightmares he had. All the torment that he had. All the laughter and the mocking that he had. And all of a sudden now he has a house. Some land.